Hello everybody, welcome to another Kerbal Space Program video. Today is part two of our full recreation of the Artemis project in KSP. Part one, we assembled the Gateway Space Station in Mooner, or Munner, Lunner, Lunner, Mooner, Nunner orbit. And today is part two, we're going to be sending the three landers to the Gateway Station to be used in the next part for, with, uh, for our crew, which will be everyone's favorite Kerbal, Jeb, Bill, Bob, and Val. So, uh, let's talk about the first lander, shall we? So, uh, this is uh, launched off of the New Glenn rocket, which you can see right here, which is developed by Blue Origin. This rocket is made by the a national team, a joint effort between, I believe it's a Blue Origin, Lockheed Martin, and a few other people. Um, it's a one of the three landers chosen for Artemis and as you can see we just attached the bottom stage of New Glenn and one of the cool things about the New Glenn rocket is that it is partially reusable so we did a bit of a boost back burn and now we can go ahead and bring our bottom stage in for a landing by the Kerbal Space Center. I may have detached the booster a little bit early because uh, we had a little bit too, too much Delta V on landing, uh, which meant that uh, we were a little bit short getting into orbit with our upper stage, but that's fine uh, because there is a a transfer stage that uh, comes with the lander, uh, so that will make it uh, easier. We had way more, way too much delta V in this this entire vehicle, whatever you call it. Uh, but right now you can see the upper stage, which is propelled by two BE three U engines, which are, I believe, the vacuum version of their uh, Blue Origin's BE three engine, which is what they currently use on the New Shepard vehicle. As uh, you can see, we're just starting to pitch flat now. Uh, the stage, uh, even though it is uh, two uh, Wolfhounds, Wolfhounds are not known for their high thrusts, and does have a great TWR, uh, which is helpful <laughs> to getting into orbit. And uh, as you can see, you, we have the uh, Blue Origin lander, uh, the national team lander, actually, uh, which is exposed now in the top two-stage lander. And then you can see that transfer stage of a which uh, we've just attached now, which is going to finish our circularization burn with that, or our orbit, or it would be orbital insertion burn with that stage. And so we got a little bit flippy out of control, so I had to give a little bit extra burn to do that. Uh, one thing I do want to say, uh, just before we get too far into this video, I do apologize for the slight delay on this video. It was supposed to come out uh, yesterday, if you're watching at time of release, but um, basically there were a lot of issues with this this, this just these craft they were very very troublesome to fly especially our third lander which we will get to uh, so that that did contribute to it and I had a quite a busy day today uh, stuff I had to do so I do apologize for coming out late uh, but uh, hopefully it was worth it so we're just gonna go ahead and do our a burn to encounter the Mun uh, this is actually propelled by a swivel engine which is not a great engine but I thought it kind of looked the part of the engine. I believe this part is developed by Lockheed Martin. The transfer stage is what they contributed to the vehicle. Now we're just going ahead and trying to match the orbit of that non-rectilinear halo orbit that the gateway station is in, which is a very difficult orbit to encounter, especially from the inclination that we started from. But uh, we're going to give it a try nonetheless, and we have a little bit of to be, so it shouldn't be a problem. Now, uh, the first lander, which is banned by the national team, is, like I said, one of three landers. So the three landers that were chosen for the audience program were the national team one, as which we're flying right now, the Dynetics lander, uh, which will be the next launch, and then a, a starship, a, a, a lunar-optimized starship, which will be our final launch. So hopefully you guys can enjoy uh, some starship action. Uh, it'll be the first starship featured in my channel. It will not be the last, so don't worry about that. And we will go ahead and finish up that burn, and we'll do our docking, which is a little bit expensive. As I detailed in the last video, docking with the Gateway Station can be a little bit tricky, but nonetheless possible if you have enough Delta V. Now, uh, I do want to talk a little bit about uh, this lander. Uh, just give you guys some, a few facts. It is uh, bas it's the most conventional lander of the three. It's, a, it's basically a two-stage lander, uh, with the bottom stage being left on moon surface. I'm not sure what their plans are for reusability. Um, we are still quite a ways out from that being finished, so I'm not sure if they'll try and reuse the bottom stage. Um, it is possible. I am not sure. 
Uh, if you are looking for any more resources or if you want to look into this more, uh, you can go to Blue Origin's website but there, um, or uh, NASA uh, will have resources, but um, the development of this lander has been rather secretive. Not secretive, but not, not very publicized, like something like the development of Starship is. I'm just going to go ahead and dock with the uh, NASA Gateway Station, which I've probably said the word gateway 18 times already, but that is unimportant. Uh, one thing that is I could improve with this lander, um, it, the scale is a little bit weird on it. It's a little bit small because if you look at the Dynetics lander in Starship, like they are huge relative to this lander. Um, that's just kind of how it went for me to just get the look right. Uh, and, you know, I, I think this is the worst looking lander of the three um, from a, even in real life. I think it's the worst looking lander of the three, and uh, I think I did probably the worst job, but you guys can judge that. Now, now we're going to be going to the docking or the utilization, no, it's not called, it's called the, I forget what it's called, actually the module, but uh, we're going to go ahead and dock up to it now. It's it's the docking module, basically. I believe the utilization module is near the back, but we can go ahead and dock the first lander to it, and then we can get ready to move on to uh, the next lander, which is going to be the Dynetics lander. Now, uh, the Dynetics lander is normally launched in a Vulcan rocket, uh, but based on the way that uh, this, this lander was built in KSP, it weighs a lot because there's a lot of part clipping involved, so unfortunately I couldn't get a Vulcan to work, so we're going to be using this custom rocket, which is just basically a two-stage rocket with uh, 16 vectors at the bottom and then one Rhino on top. Uh, this was by far the easiest rocket to launch. Both the New Glenn and the Starship have had major stability issues, especially on the uh, the boost back and the landing of the bottom stage. This one doesn't have any sort of recoverability because the Vulcan doesn't either uh, because ULA is very bad at keeping up with the trends, guys. Honestly, I don't know who would honestly launch a, rock, launch a payload with Vulcan, like, unless it's people who already have contracts, which kind of sucks for them. Like, it is just inferior to Falcon or New Glenn or Starships. It's worse, just objectively worse. Like, they're talking about, oh, we can leave a stage in orbit a second. Okay, that's not going to help you. <laughs> um, sorry, guys, but uh, tangents aside, uh, we just pop the fairing, and you can see the Dynamics lander. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a pretty, it's a little, it's an interesting lander. Like, it's not really what you'd think of. Uh, if you don't know how it works, basically, you, you could, uh, a second ago, you could see those tanks. Uh, they have four fuel tanks. Uh, the two radially mounted ones are detached just prior to landing, so this, most of the system itself is reusable, so all you have to replace are those radially mounted fuel tanks, which, you know, it's not like the, the engines, you don't have to replace the engines. The real one does have eight engines, uh, this is actually one of the more difficult things to recreate in KSP. Those are actually just four Bobcat engines, uh, because they re really couldn't find any engines that were the proper scale, uh, or size for the for the uh, for the lander, so I wound up using two bobcats. I think we kind of got the look right. Um, let me know what you guys think uh, if you have any other ideas. I we did think about using the puff, the monoprop engine, but that had way, 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 way too little thrust to weight to even come close to be able to manage to you know keep this thing from exploding into the mun. So uh, two bobcats is what we went with. Uh, I think that kind of got the look generally about right. Um, I'm actually pretty happy with how this lander came out, especially the back and the... It, it just it generally looks like the lander. Now, uh, as you can see, it's not auto-strutted, so I will have to do that uh, while it's docked. I'll have to do that at some point because, yeah, it's really wobbly. Uh, but, um, hey, what can you do? So we're just going to go ahead and get our docking lined up now, which is notoriously hard, especially we're docking closer to Periats. The nodes can get really far apart real quick because you're going pretty quick around the Mun at periaps because of the uh, inclination of the orbit. Uh, but nevertheless, we had a little extra delta V. We used all that uh, fuel in that up, upper stage. And then I believe, actually, I don't believe we use all the fuel, but we do go ahead and detach the upper stage uh, momentarily as I like f over time warp and fly past it. But who cares? We have. We can we have the fuel and we have like 3,000 meters a second in the lander, so it's not a problem if we need to use any of its fuel. And there we go, flying by, almost crashing the solar panels into it. But then we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of maneuvering with the lander 
and then we can go ahead and bring it in to uh, the next docking port right next to the Blue Origin one, uh, which this thing looks absolutely massive compared to the Blue Origin one, but yeah, that's what I was talking about. I made a little, you know, the mistakes of scaling, but uh, we are going to just go ahead and dock this lander to the station as we speak. I didn't quite get the inclination right, or not the inclination, but like the rotational rotation of it correct. Um, and I do believe I turn on infinite electricity. Uh, that's because I was uh, back and I forgot to re-extend the solar panels. So sorry about that, guys. I did have to cheat, but I had been recording for like three hours at this point. So I just said screw it. Um, but here we go. We're coming in, in and in, and docked. We are docked with. Oh no, no, no! We have to get another docking port because that docking port didn't work. Um, so we're going to go ahead and try that again. I almost spoke too soon there. So go ahead and in, 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 dock. Cool. That is two of the three landers at the Gateway Station. And now for the final and probably the most anticipated lander, Starship. So this is Starship on top with the uh, super heavy launch vehicle on bottom. Uh, I'm pretty sure most of you guys know what Starship is by now. Uh, if you're wondering why it's white and not stainless steel, uh, or this one's my carbon fiber, uh, the a real Starship Lunar Lander is going to be actually carbon fiber and it doesn't have any aerodynamic surfaces. This is a uh, you know, optimized for lunar, it's a lunar lander Starship. So basically, it, uh, it's, not a, it's not an Earth Starship, it's a moon Starship, hence the different design. So the one thing that doesn't change about Starship is a Super Heavy and the fact that we have to get it back to Kerbin or back to the uh, Kerbal Space Center. So we're going to do a little bit of a boost back burn, get the grid fins extended, and then we can go ahead and bring it back in for a landing. Unfortunately, since the grid fins are made out of octagonal struts, uh, they don't really have any aerodynamic effect, so they're just kind of more for show. If anyone has a way to fix that, um, let me know, because it's kind of lame. Like, you can get the look to look really good, but they don't really do anything, so that's kind of sad. And here we go, just doing the last bit of the burn, and I run out of fuel like five meters above the ground. So, whop! I'm actually amazed it didn't blow up. But, um, oh well. Uh, now we are back. I really was amazed I didn't blow up, but uh, that was actually first try, too. So, that was neat. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and uh, come back to our lander now, as it, or our starship, which will go up and get into orbit. Now we're not exactly entirely sure how its fueling system will work uh, because we use all of our fuel in this starship to get ourselves to lunar orbit. So I'm not sure how they're going to do in real life if they're going to get into orbit, refuel, and then go out to the moon or the moon, and this being real life. So I'm not sure what their plan is, uh, but I, I'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, and uh, also these wolfhounds are extremely underpowered for starships. So as you can see, we get to our app labs and then we actually start descending a little bit right now. And then I, I just keep horizontal speed up and just try and ex accelerate, 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 and then just get into a slightly elliptical orbit. Uh, but you know, what can you do? It was, it was fine. Um, so I'm just gonna wait till the mun, mun gets into positions so we can burn at periapt, which is more efficient as according to everyone's favorite Oberth effect. And that also means we can start to get planning for our MUN encounter and approach. One thing interesting about the uh, Lunar Starship Lander is that we know nothing about it. Basically, we've seen a few renders, that's it. So, I think it's entirely possible that my design will be outdated at any conceivable time. I think the Lunar Lander is just so bottom priority for SpaceX right now. Uh, they've, like, I don't think at all started working on it. Uh, the Dynetics lander is really the one that's made the most progress, at least the most public progress that we know of. Um, they just unveiled a kind of like a prototype mock-up. It's, it's a mock-up, really. It's not functional at all. It's just like a little structure that they built to kind of resemble it and kind of look at the inside. Uh, but that was just a few days ago uh, that they revealed that. So from what it could seem, the Dynetics team is who is furthest ahead, although we don't know what Blue Origin uh, does or Lockheed Martin, they're, they all kind of operate behind a, you know, closed door as opposed to SpaceX, which just, you know, blows up their rockets in front of hundreds of thousands of, hundreds of thousands of people, or even maybe hundreds of thousands of people. A lot of people watch that, like when SN4 just went, that was kind of neat. 
wasn't it? So uh, we're gonna go ahead and get docked up now. Um, there is one thing that I thought, like this video probably has five hours of raw footage. Um, and this was like on the fifth hour of recording. And I was coming in and then when I opened up the docking part on the top, I noticed a major, 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 major problem. And you guys will probably be able to see it when that occurs. And I was like, oh, geez, it's mission over. I thought that I was going to have to redo the entire Starship um, launch, which I was not in the mood to do. Um, so you guys will see here in just a moment uh, when this thing starts to come in. It looks like a blimp, honestly, when it's coming in. When you only can, when you look at it from a certain angle, it looks like, like right there, it looks like a blimp. Um, our blimp, blimp lander, blimp lander. But you can see, look. You guys can look, right at that docking port, the fairing extends a little bit beyond the docking port. So I was like, oh crap, can I not dock? So I'm like, okay, let's try rotating, try this docking port, maybe the lander was getting in the way of the dynamic lander. So I'm like, okay, let's try it again from right here. And you guys can see that, right? Like it, that fairing is extending out like a little, like a noticeable amount, but it docked. So snazzy, right guys? That was that, and we are all docked up now. So that is gonna complete part two of the Artemis series. The next part, we are gonna be sending the crew out to the Gateway Station and landing them on the moon surface, or the moon surface. So please do stay tuned to that. So thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Please rate or comment to this video once again. Thank you for watching, we'll see you next time, and bye.